Hello everybody, I'm Quentin and I thought I would just share some tips for using PDFs on the Mac. One of the things I've always loved about the Mac, uh, right since I first started using OS X back uh, ooh, about 15 years ago, was how well PDF support was built into the operating system. And just in case there are any new users here, I'll just point out a couple of basics that if you have almost any application that has a print command, you can produce a PDF. Some applications will have their own special export as PDF um, menu items, but even if they don't, you can just go print, and in the bottom left-hand corner of your uh, print uh, dialog, you've got various thing options to save as PDF, open a PDF in preview, mail a PDF to somebody, and so on. You can even edit this menu and add new things to do with PDFs in there. It's all very cool. So let's imagine, for example, that you wanted a... Uh, printed calendar to go on the wall of your uh, of some club maybe of which you're a member so we bring up the standard calendar here uh, and we go file print and there we have um, one there's all sorts of ways you can configure the printout in the calendar but if we go on to the next page standard print dialog we can say save as PDF and for the moment I'm just going to put this on the desktop and save and there, I'll double click and it'll open in preview. And here we have a nice calendar which we could send to the club secretary to stick on the club notice board and start filling things in. Very easy. No need to purchase expensive copies of Adobe Acrobat or anything else. You can do a lot of stuff uh, right out of the box here. Um, and there are good reasons why you want to create PDFs like this. Um, I, far too often I see people sending around Word documents or Excel spreadsheets or whatever by email, and there are a lot of dangers associated with that. Uh, one danger is simply that the person receiving it may not have the same software as you have, they may not have the same version, they may not have OpenOffice or whatever software you're using to create it. Um, also, editable documents also often have um, stuff hidden away in them uh, that you you may not have realized is here is there so here's a letter I've just got as a word document from one of my suppliers and it says dear gullible customer we would be delighted to sell you our product for $250 now what the secretary at our friendly supplier didn't realize was that they had track changes turned on so if I go here and turn on the reviewing toolbar I'm currently looking at the final version, but if I show the markup, we can see actually what was there before. In fact, let's look at the original version, which said, Dear Valued Customer, we would be delighted to sell you our product for $50. And they went away and edited it, especially for me, uh, to bump the price up by a factor of five. Um, if you send somebody PDFs, that kind of thing doesn't happen by accident. Um, and I have seen salespeople sending price lists as Excel spreadsheets, not realizing that the person at the other end can display, uh, reveal the hidden columns, can see the calculations that you've used to come up with the prices, what kind of margins you're making on your on your products and so on. Definitely, unless you want the person at the other end to be able to edit the document or pass it on to somebody uh, who needs to edit it, it's much better to send them a PDF if you possibly can. Okay, what I wanted to talk about today though was preview. Preview is the uh, arguably one of the uh, least exciting apps on the Mac. It just shows you the contents of things, but it's also one of my favorite utilities. And I just want to show you some of the things that you may not have realized you can do in Preview. So let's just open a PDF document here. This is the user guide for a camera that I used to have. Um, and most of what we're interested in here is going to happen under the sidebar menu here. I'm not going to concentrate much on annotations and things uh, in this in this tutorial. I want to talk about um, editing the document as a whole. So here's the sidebar thing. I'll show you a couple of things. One thing it is worth noting is that a lot of documents do actually have a useful table of contents here and you can jump around through the document by clicking on that. Um, but most of what we're going to do is under the thumbnails here. So this is a longish document. I think I've got 99 pages in here. And let's say that I have just um, 
sent this, uh, given this camera to another family member and they were asking me about setting the shutter speed. So I just want to send them the last few pages of this document um, so they don't have to browse through the whole manual because as you know, lots of people aren't very good at that. So pages 96 to 99, I want to send them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the beginning, click the first page, go to the end. Or nearly go to page 95, shift click that. And I've selected all of those pages in between and I can just hit delete backspace. And, um, and now I have a four page PDF, which I can just save. Now, if I do save that, it's worth noting that um, I will overwrite the original. So what we're meant to do in this new Mac world is to duplicate it and rename it and so forth. But it's also perhaps worth knowing that if you hold down the Alt key, Option key, you get a save as. So I can say, I can create a new PDF called shutter speed. Um, there it is. I just thought I would pause here because uh, that save as procedure actually caught me out. When you do save as, yes, it creates a new copy of the document with the new name you give it. It also closes the document you have open. And because of the way preview works, that document is saved with all its changes. So I ended up, in fact, with two copies of that document, both that had been trimmed down. So I just thought I'd warn you of that. Okay, let's go back to the show. You might want to use save as with caution. If I open that up, I have a much smaller thing which just has these four pages in. This is useful if uh, perhaps some of the other pages were um, confidential information you didn't want people to see. When you're in here as well, you can do various other types of edits on these documents. So you can reorder things. I can put this page down, I can drag it down below there, and then um, these are now in, in a different order. I'll put that back, that could get confusing. Um, but you can also bring in contents from other sources. So you might think that this manual will be rather boring, and so let's put a nice picture of a dog in here. Um, there you go. There he is. And if I look through this document, you can see uh, I now have a PDF with a picture of the dog in the middle. The dog is in uh, portrait um, uh, when he really ought to be in, in, in landscape. So let us just rotate him. Now you notice that rotate by default will rotate to the left anti-clockwise. I want to rotate clockwise. So I hold down the alt or option key here that changes the direction. And there we go. So we can have mix portrait and landscape pages in here. And we may decide actually the dog is the most interesting bit of this document. So let's drag him up to the top. So he's now page one and we have the other pages and I can just hit save. And, uh, and there we go. We now have um, a, a five page PDF including this. So you can bring in stuff from other sources. I could maybe open, um, let's see. A, this is some other PDF I found online, which is sample cover letters. And I can, at the end of my um, document, I can bring in a page or several pages from here and just drop it in. And then I have um, this cover letter at the bottom of my PDF. So I can merge uh, into one PDF um, information from a whole variety of sources. They may have been produced with different programs by different people. Uh, and um, you can really shuffle around your PDF and turn it into one convenient thing that you're gonna to mail to somebody or maybe print out. One useful thing, by the way, if you did want to print stuff out, let, let's say, what have we got here? Okay, let's imagine that we're printing this double-sided and we want to make sure that this um, comes out on the front of a page. Uh, that means it needs to be an odd numbered page and at the moment it's page two. So one of the things we can go do is go up here and we can say edit, insert a blank page. There you go. And so now if I'm printing it double sided, I'll get the dog on one side, I'll get a blank page on the other. Um, it's kind of interesting what it would do if uh, if he's landscape and this is portrait, but I can make the blank page <laughs> landscape as well. And then I will get um, this uh, has is now become the third page. It's still its internal numbering still shows it as two. And uh, there you go. Now it's caught up. And um, and so we can be sure that when we're printing double sided, this particular page will come out in the right place. That can be quite useful if you want chapters to start on a particular page, something like that. OK, uh, let's just close that down.
Now, our original action of chopping down a multi-page document, there is actually another way to do that. And uh, let's open this. This is part two here. And um, let's imagine that we just want to send this page and this page to somebody else. We can just select both of those and do copy. And then we can do file new from clipboard. And hey presto, we have a two-page PDF. Now this is all very cool because behind the scenes of course PDFs store fonts, they store all sorts of information and Preview is working all that out for you, uh, working out which fonts are used on this particular page, these particular pages, making sure that you end up um, with uh, PDFs with, uh, with the right stuff in them. Now one thing I do want to show you, let's imagine we want to bring in some pages from another document. Here's a really unexciting uh, tax form. And I want to bring in this page here and drag it into, into here. Now what I want you to notice is this thin line here. This is important. And the reason this is important is that it indicates the bottom of my current document. If I drag in a page, I can drag it there, I can drag it there, I can drag it here, and I am adding it to my existing document. If I drag it below that line, all I'm doing is just telling Preview to open it. So Preview now has two documents open. It has this one and it has this one, and they are completely separate documents. So um, if you want to merge pages to produce a single document, make sure you drag it above that line. If you do have more than one, this, this by the way is the same kind of effect you get. Let me close all of these down. Don't say, don't say, suppose I opened, uh, let's say, this and this at the same time by double clicking on both of them, I open one copy of preview and this one has all of the pages from one document, this one has all of the pages from the other document. And you can just about see maybe in the video um, this faint line here which indicates the, the boundaries between the two of them. It is worth noting though that you can take pages from the first one and drag them into here if you want to, assuming it's not locked. Uh, it will allow you to um, it will allow you to, to, to manipulate things there, but it's worth noting that if, if you see lots of pages in here and you then save the result and you find you haven't got them, it may be because you're actually looking at two different documents here. So one last thing I will show you here, and that is that um, if you had, say, um, the first part of a document here, which you had perhaps scanned in and then your scanner had jammed and you wanted to bring in um, the, uh, the rest of the document, you can just drag and drop like that, and now you've got your big long document, which is the merge of your two scans. And then the last thing I'll show you is almost everything that we've done here, you can also do in another view. If you go to here, there is a contact sheet view, which looks like that and shows you all the pages of your document in a, in a contact view. And most of the things I've shown you, we can also do here. So I can reorder pages, I can uh, insert new uh, new images and the contact view even though it's under this kind of sidebar menu is really a completely different view where you just view thumbnails and um, it's uh, sometimes that's a useful way to particularly if it, to, to handle stuff particularly if you've got something like PowerPoint slides. So I hope those are useful maybe you learned something about preview you didn't know before and uh, and I find it an exceedingly useful thing and I find that lots of people on the Mac don't quite realize how hand, how easy it is to produce their own custom PDFs from all sorts of different sources uh, and uh, preview is a great tool for doing that.